Hi everyone. So I'm back with a, a wee very short video just to show you how I made the border on the ballerina slipper. Um, I had comments of people that wanted to see that. Now the reason why I didn't put it in the video in the first video is because I'm self-taught. I I cannot claim to know how to crochet. What I know how to do suits me, but I'm. I'm pretty sure it's not perfect, it's not fully correct, skill-wise, technique-wise, so I didn't feel comfortable showing something that might not be the right way. Um, but some comments made a point that uh, not all people know how to crochet anyway, and um, the appealing of the slipper was mainly due to the border. So here I am showing how I make the border, so I'm hoping that's good enough. And if my technique is not correct, please don't come at me. So again, <laughs> I, I'm i not a crochet, so just to uh, set the expectation. So let's get started. I'm hoping that you will be able to see the contrast with the yarn. Um, so hope my choice of yarn is suitable. Um, let me just zoom in. So I tend to start at the back of my project or on the seam of the project. So whatever project I do, if it has a seam, a connection or something, I tend to start from there. Now, what I do is, I will crochet a border using the first row at the top, all around in circles. And I'm trying to stay on the top edge. So, I'll start from here, grab a stitch. So, this is a stitch. I loop my working yarn around my crochet, pull it through, and with this strand of yarn that comes out of the ball, I loop it around once and pull that through the first loop I have. So let's see. If I do it again, so. one more time. I insert the hook in the first stitch at the top. I grab my working yarn and I position it on the hook like this and pull it through the first stitch and now I have one loop on my crochet hook then I grab the strand there is the one connected to the ball so not the tail the other one loop it around the crochet hook and pull that through the loop that I had already on the crochet hook. So that's my first, I would say, starting point, starting stitch of my crochet border. Now I just follow each single stitch around. So I will with the loop still on my hook, I'll go into the next stitch, grab the working yarn, pull it through. Now I have two loops. And I loop the working yarn on top. So I have the two loops and the working yarn. I will now pull the working yarn through the two loops. I 
again. I have one loop to start. I go inside the next stitch. Now, you see here how it's very tight. So if I wanted to go to the very next stitch, is this one. But it's getting bulkier. So you could actually skip one. In order not to bunch it up too much, I'll skip this one, go to the next. I have my loop on the hook, through the stitch, grab the working yarn, pull it across. I have now two loops. I wrap around the working yarn on the hook and pull that through the two loops. And you keep going. Through the stitch, grab the working yarn, pull it through, you have two loops, wrap the working yarn around the hook and pull through the two loops. Now this is where what I mean by I don't have the know-how or the skill as a crocheter, I just go by what feels right. So again, until I can grab the next stitch without having the border bunching up, I will. But if I feel, like in this case, right, if I feel that it's bunching up too much, I'll skip one. What you don't want to do though is skip too many because that will, basically what you're doing is decreasing and if you decrease too much, you will tighten the opening. And then in some case, it's fine. I mean, if you're doing this for yourself and you find that they're maybe too wide, that's one way of tightening the fit. So you need to go, my advice is to, if you don't know how to crochet like me, just go with what feels right and normal, natural with the hand. So in this case, I skipped another one. And I keep going. Into the next. Into the next. Into the next. Try to follow the same column, but again, I don't know if you can see it. So I'm on this row here. If I was to follow the same row, I will be going way underneath here. And we don't want that. We need to stay on top. So you follow the row until you cannot anymore because then you're just losing the border. So let's get going until we get to that point and I'll show you what I mean. So again, one loop, inside the stitch, grab the working yarn, put it through, wrap the working yarn again and put it through the two loops. <laughs> okay. I hope you can see it. <coughs> Pardon me. So we are here. We need to follow the road that allows us to be on the top. So if I was to follow the stitch row that I'm on it, I will be going down here and finish here. We don't want this. I need to finish here. So I can just go around and keep going. 
So once you start seeing that you can no longer follow your stitch, just grab the one slightly above to stay on top. Again, that's the way I'm doing it. Now here comes the tricky part. Here you need to try and, and connect the two sides in a way that looks seamless because obviously here you have the knot, right? You, you knot this part together so you don't have any actual free stitch. I mean maybe this one but you really need to go and, and try and find it somehow. So I'll go until I can manage to grab a stitch. So in this case, I was able to find that one. And here I have only one strand. I don't... I wouldn't go for that. Let's see. I would actually go directly on the other side where I find a full stitch. So once again, I'm I'm always with a loop on the hook, always. So I grab the stitch closest. And this is us going the round. Same thing here, you need to make sure that you are on the top. So stretch your work every now and again so you know where you are. So I'm going to grab this stitch here. And keep going on the rounds. Same principle as before. Pick the stitch that sits on top, trying to do your best to follow the same row, but obviously the main thing is that you have the border on the top. And if you feel that the stitches that you're picking are too tight and the border is bunching up, skip one. But until you can easily pick them up, go for it. Sorry, I just knocked my camera. So once again, my loop, I grab the stitch, 
wrap the working yarn, pull it through, wrap the working yarn and pull it through the two loops. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this should be called the single crochet. Now, when you get the back, it's a little bit tricky, more or less like at the front. You will have obviously the seam that it's a little bit tougher for you to grab stitches and you will have a little bit of a gap based on what where you started first. But same principle and make sure you don't get mixed up with the initial tail so get that out of the way. So you grab stitches until you can. So this is my last on this side here. And there is this other stitch right here just on the other side of the seam so I'm gonna grab that one and I'm gonna go back inside where I started first So this is my first round done. Just okay. Again. It's all up to you. If you like it like that, then you cannot be bothered doing a second round. You can leave it like that. What I did on the white and pink ones is I did another round creating uh, loops in order to put uh, a drawstring in it. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So what I'm going to do now is making chains and to make chains is you have your loop on a crochet hook. You grab your working yarn that you have wrapped around your hook and you pull that inside the loop. So once again, you have the loop, wrap around the working yarn, pull the working yarn through the loop. I'm going back to the start. So we are here. One thing um, I think it's correct. Whenever we count the chains, so if I say I'm making ch chain three or three chains, it's every time I loop through the hoop. So I have this wee loop on the crochet, right, of my last stitch, of my last single crochet. I don't count that. So if I need to do three chains, it's one, two, and three. Or at least that's the way I count them. So this is a, a repetition of three chains. And what I do is I will connect this loop not on the next one but the one after so every other stitch so i go inside like i did before i grab my working yarn pull it through and pull it through again
and that creates the first loop. What I'm going to do is just to let you see better, because obviously now blue on blue is not working. I'm going to swap yarn, but this is just for visibility. I mean, if you want to do it for decoration, do it. But otherwise, this is main. I'm doing this now mainly to make you see better what's happening. Or at least I hope. We are back. Let's let's pretend that this is the blue yarn and I'm finished the round the round. I need to make the loops. So I chain three and it's one, two, three. And I connect this chain in every other stitch. So my next stitch from where I am would be this one. I need to go to the next. So skip this and go to the next. So go through. You now have the two loops. So it's the same stitch as before. And pull across. Again, chain three. One. Two. And three so this is the stitch where I'm doing this chain three this is the next one that I will skip and I will connect my chain into this one three again Hope you can see it. Okay. So we started here, we did chain three, we skipped the following stitch and we connected the chain on the second one after. Chain three again, skip the next stitch, connected. The connection uses the same kind of stitch that you did the base so you only need to know one stitch and you keep going all around now again i did not count how many stitches i have i don't know how many loops i will get out of it but somehow it seems to be still working out Again, chain three, one, two, and three. Skip the next stitch, go to the second one after, and connect. Now, 
another thing that I can say is you could do this, do the loops directly on a knitting part. That there is no no problem. I just think that having the base done with a crochet, it gives more of a sturdier base to work with. On top of which you can then do the loops. But nobody is stopping you to do the loops directly on the native part. But doing it this way, you can also play with colors. Now, obviously, I change color in order for you to see better what I'm doing. But this could have been easily just a cosmetic decision. Now, let's say that, like me, now you just lost count of how many chains you've done because I was talking and I didn't pay attention and I stopped doing the chains halfway through. You can count them. So just count how many bees you have. So not taking the very first stitch that almost looks like a bee, but it's not. So don't count that because that's your base. We have one and two, meaning that I need to still do one last chain. Go ahead. We are coming towards the tricky part. And you see, that's another thing why I advise you to do the base is because if you were to do the loops uh, right on the knitting project, you might find it difficult then to turn the curve on this part here, where now you have an even base that you can play with. You still need to pay attention on the stitches on where you are. Don't want two, three. Another thing that um, you need to be careful of is the tension. So try to keep your working yarn in a comfortable position where you can maintain the tension. Tighter you pull, tighter this gets and harder it gets than to loop to, to do whatever stitch. Looser you go, bigger the loop, and bigger the stitch. So either way, either you're making your life more complicated or it will not look right. So try to keep it in a medium tension where it's easy enough for you to make the stitch, but at the same time to maintain an even tight looking stitch.
Now the loops you can make as big and as small as you want. Um, I'm doing three chains and this creates this size of a loop. You could do two chains and it will be slightly smaller. You can do five chains and it can be more of a scalloped edge. Again, your choice. So this is with two chains. I just realized that I counted it wrong, but at least you can see the difference. Just zoom in a little. This is a three chain one, and this is a two chain one beside, so slightly tighter. So again, personal choices. Here I just miscounted the chain, so let me grab one more. Now here, for example, I had a little bit of a doubt and I wasn't too sure where was I. So if you're like me, that you get a little bit confused on where do you need to go next, just stretch your work to see where you come out from last. So you can easily see it's not the next one, it's the one after. And we are getting to the finish line. And back in where you started. So here you have this stitch that it's just a single stitch. So grab that. Okay. Sorry. My bad. So you have the three chains, you go here, seeing as this is the last and so we need to close the work, we are going to do what they call a slip stitch, meaning I have my loop on the hook, go inside the last stitch, wrap around the working yarn, pull it through the stitch and pull it through my last loop okay chain one and cut your yarn that chain one is basically once you pull your yarn through it's basically a knot As, again, not perfect because I know I'm not a pro in, in, in the skill and the technique, but this is how you do it. This is the border. All right. Then you tidy up. You tidy up your yarns, tie wee knots just to secure them and like everything else you just hide them. I can find my needle. Yeah.
and then just hide the yarn like you would normally do Okay, now you need to create the drawstring with loops of this size. If you have even a, a ribbon, that would look nice too. You can just feed the ribbon through and tie it at the top with a wee bow. Uh, but if you don't have um, a ribbon at hand or any other string that you wish to use, you grab your yarn, whatever yarn you want. Let's grab the blue one. And you just make a long chain. Again, I did not count how many chains I've made. I just measured it. That was, um, I was able to wrap the slipper. Where am I? To wrap the slipper um, once, and then I have a bit left. Bear in mind, it's always good to have it longer than shorter because you can still tie a knot and cut the ends to make it fit but obviously if it's too short then you need to start all over again and the way i do this is to start the long chain you grab your working yarn have the end inside your palm get these two index finger and the middle finger wrap the yarn around making an X right hold the yarn in place grab your hook insert the hook in the middle of the two fingers and grab the loose yarn through once you have the loop release everything and pull on the wee tail and on the working yarn this will tighten the knot and this will create the starting loop on your crochet hook once you have this you can start chaining best way is to hold with your index and your thumb on the knot and on the uh, wee tail so you don't get confused wrap your working yarn around your hook and pull it through and that's one chain done grab your working yarn and pull it through grab your working yarn and pull it through and you keep going until you have a chain long enough to go around the slipper and a bit more So let's say that I have enough, obviously it's not, but just to demonstrate. So once you're happy with your length, cut the working yarn and pull through on the last chain. This will create the knot to secure the work. Right? So this is your chain. This is your drawstring. Again, better longer than shorter. Let's assume that this is way too long. What you can do is feed it through the slipper, tie a bow. On the tail ends of your bow, you just knot this. This is the way I do it at least. You knot this like this, just normal knot. 
pull very tight and then just cut the end cut the end just pull whatever loose yarn you have and this is the way you shorten the tail if it's too long but again if you start with a drawstring that's already too short then you need to start again so I hope this has answered a few questions around uh, the border of the slipper um, obviously whenever you're finished with your drawstring start from the back and start feeding it in and out I mean that's again self-explanatory I think in and out until you get to the top and just tie a bow. And that's it. So please let me know if you have any more questions, add a comment. Um, again, I apologize if uh, you felt that the first video was incomplete. I generally thought that uh, as the project, the, the, the slipper was finished and wearable. Um, that was it and whatever decoration you wanted to add it was mainly uh, your choice but I can understand that some people have uh, no knowledge at all so I'm hoping that whatever I showed you today it's close enough to be the correct technique in any case I do have I recently got this book that I recommend and I'm starting to read it a little bit. This is not any sponsorship or anything like that. Uh, there are plenty of books out there but for one it's easy because it gives you the terminology in UK and US and that is something that confuses me a lot and it gives you step by step of uh, the basics on some little projects but I mean I'm sure there are plenty out there I just find this at the works uh, some time ago and I thought it was very useful so every now and again I get I go back to this book to see if I can make um, a different stitch or if what I'm doing is close enough to being correct so just an advice but as you know, out there there are also plenty of videos of people that have crochet all their lives and they're absolute pros at it. So I would advise you to um, check those out because they, they really are amazing. Okay, so this is me. I blabbed uh, already too much, 45 minutes in. Um, thank you again. Please keep uh, giving me feedbacks because that will help me. Um, get better and have a lovely Sunday bye guys